Mene. Sorry. Thank you, Ian. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with all of you. And with your spirit. And welcome to Our Lady of Fatima Church as we gather for this 22nd Sunday of Ordinary Time. And a very special welcome to those who are joining us live streaming today. Just know that wherever you are and whatever your health is, whether you're with others or you're alone, you, we, you are very much part of our community here at Our Lady of Fatima as we gather for this Sunday Mass. We remember as we begin, no matter what has happened in our week or in our lives, God is a forgiving God, a merciful God. And so we say, you sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came among us to call sinners. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You intercede for us now at the right hand of the Father. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, on earth peace, peace to, to people, people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayers. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name so that by deepening our sense of reverence you may nurture in us what is good and by your watchful care keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And this morning, during this Mass, we remember especially Rina Remquinha. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. <clears throat> now, Israel, give heed to the statutes and ordinances that I am teaching you to observe, so that you may live to enter and occupy the land that the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. You must neither add anything to what I command you, nor take away anything from it, but keep the commandments of the Lord your God with which I am charging you. You must observe them diligently, for this will show your wisdom and discernment to the peoples who, when they hear all of these statutes, will say, Surely this great nation is a wise and discerning people. For what other great nation has a God so near to it 
as the Lord our God is whenever we call to him. And what other great nation has statutes and ordinances as just as this entire law that I am setting before you today? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. O Lord, who may abide in your tent? O Lord, who may abide in your tent? Whoever walks blamelessly and does what is right and speaks the truth from their heart, whoever does not slander with their tongue. O Lord, who may abide in your tent? Whoever does no evil to a friend nor takes up a reproach against a neighbor in whose eyes the wicked one is despised but who honors those who fear the Lord. O Lord, Lord, who may abide in your tent. Whoever stands by their oath even to their hurt, who does not lend money at interest and does not take a bribe against the innocent, one who does these things shall never be moved. O Lord, who may abide in your tent. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The Father gave us birth by the word of truth, that we would become first fruits of his creation. Hallelujah. Ah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to the Lord. When the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. They do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. There are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups and pots and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes Ask Jesus, why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with undefiled hands? Jesus said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites. It is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandments of God and hold to human traditions. Then Jesus called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand there's nothing outside of a person that by going in can defile it, but the things that come out of a person are what defile them, for it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come, fornication theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within and they defile a person. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. So you might think that the end of that Gospel would kind of give us all kinds of other sins that we might um, reach, reach out to and commit or something. It's not meant that way. And so in a, a week or so, I, I'm going to get cataract surgery, which I understand is a procedure that lasts about 10 or 15 minutes. But if you looked at my dining room table, you would find four or five sheets double-sided of instructions, laws, so to speak, to prepare 
for cataract surgery and after it. Now, all of that, of course, is meant to be helpful. All of those rules and all of those guidelines and all of those laws, so to speak, that are on those pages, and if I ignored them, then there would be the danger that something would have go wrong, and I wouldn't get my sight right. That's a good way of looking at that first reading in the book of Deuteronomy. You see, that's the, the ancient sense of law. Law was seen in the ancient days as something far different than we see it today. So often we see law as a burden, as something, well, you just have to follow. But you see, as it mentions near the end of that Deuteronomy passage, what other great nation has statutes and ordinances as just as this entire law that I'm setting before you today? In other words, those poor people out there, other nations, they don't have the law, and so they really don't measure up. Hmm? And so the law, in ancient times, this is a nomadic people, traveling through the wilderness, traveling through the desert, they needed guidelines. They needed a GS, GPS, so to speak. And this is what God was giving them in the law so that uh, they would be successful in, your li in their lives. And so that's something for our own time today, that whatever laws, traditions are passed down to us, especially in the Christian community and through the church, not to be seen as a burden, but rather to be seen as something that is uh, a gift to us. Now, I would say that uh, this, is, this sense of law is particularly pertinent in today with the pandemic. With the pandemic, we have all kinds of guidelines, laws, so to speak, saying you have to wear masks, you have to stay six feet away from other people that you don't know, and uh, during, especially during the lockdown, you have to stay away from other people and shut yourself in the house and so on. And of course, we recognize that not as a burden, really, at least in the best of our times we don't. Sometimes it can grate on us, but when we can't visit grandchildren and all kinds of other things. But generally we see it as something that helps us, something that helps the community, something that helps the world. And so it is with all those things that were mentioned at the end of the gospel. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, and so on. So that's the tradition that's handed down to us. So if we if we keep those laws and avoid those things and others, not a burden, but rather it is a way of preserving the community, of uh, preserving our own uh, balance in our lives and our own, so to speak, our own health. Hmm? Um, I know this is a, a, a not a, a generally accepted thing, but uh, in the main, we see the vaccine not as a burden then. We see it as a gift. We see it as a gift to us. And uh, all some countries in the world simply have not uh, received enough vaccine. Uh, India, I think parts of Africa and other countries. And so, in a sense, they haven't received the gift. And uh, sometimes we've hoarded the gift, uh, going to booster shots when others in the world uh, don't have even a first shot. So the sense of law, the sense of guidance and so on, is gift very strongly there and very important in our own day to day.
you don't have prayers. Let us rise as we turn to God in prayer. Let us pray for those in responsibility of leadership in the church, especially Pope Francis, for his health, and for all of those making important decisions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who have find laws a burden to give them the spirit of God to enlighten them we pray to the Lord Lord hear our prayer let us pray for the people of Afghanistan for those who are whose lives are in danger we pray especially now for the families of those who lost members of their family in death this week. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who suffer from natural disasters. Let us pray today, continue to pray for the people of Haiti. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us take a moment of silence to pray for our own particular intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray now for, especially, Eta Harina, Ray Quinha, the niece of Maria Lema. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. So we present these prayers to you. Gracious God, with confidence, we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. The mystery of this water and this wine, may we become partakers of the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our human life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Bless be God forever. Wash me, O Lord, of my iniquity. Cleanse me of my sins. Pray that our sacrifice may become acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. And Lord, accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. 
And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, all the clergy and all of God's people. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, St. Paul, uh, uh, all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And we may rise at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your and I invite you to offer each other some sign of the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
And I offer peace to all of those who are joining us remotely in live stream. Peace of Christ be with you. Peace of Christ, Ian. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. May this mingling of the body and blood of my Lord Jesus Christ. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. May the receiving of your body and blood of Jesus Christ. But through your love and mercy be for me protection in mind and body and a healing remedy. My brothers and sisters in Christ, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. May the blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life.
Let us rise and pray. Renewed by this bread from heavenly table, we beseech you, O Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbors. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So I wish you a good final week before uh, the beginning of, uh, so to speak, fall after Labor Day. And we hope that you renew yourselves during this particular week. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing upon you this day. Gracious and loving God, we know the love you have for this community and for this parish. We ask you to send your spirit in a special way upon all of those who are moving into new endeavors at this time of year. For all of those who find the laws of COVID difficult for the sake of the community, bless us, give us a spirit of love for our neighbor, and may Almighty God bless you this day and in the days ahead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
Mm-hmm.